If you like this video, share it on social media. This is a new channel and it helps us a lot. Ever since Mad Max Fury Road, George Miller's name has come up constantly around the film fan community whenever the question of who should direct the next upcoming genre film comes up. We heard a pitch for Justice League, Metal Gear, Deadpool 2, Star Wars, Man of Steel 2, and The Batman. People have seemingly put their utmost faith in his abilities, wanting him to put his directing hands on anything and everything. Personally, I take issue with this. To explain my reasoning, let's look at his work on Mad Max Fury Road. In my opinion, it's one of the best and most beautiful action films, period. The movie had interesting and fun characters and awesome visual style and the world building was extremely strong. But this was the first live action film he directed in 17 years. The film was delayed multiple times due to story problems. This caused Warner Brothers to order massive reshoots which in turn made the movie go well over budget causing the shoot ratio to be one of the highest of any Hollywood film, with the average shooting ratio being 10 to 1, meaning 10 hours of footage for every one hour of screen time, Fury Road's shooting ratio was 240 to 1, meaning 240 hours of raw footage for every hour of screen time. That's crazy. To me, this makes Fury Road seem less expertly crafted and more like someone shooting as much as possible and finding the movie in the editing room. And when your film isn't very story focused and is mostly one long action scene, it's a lot easier to do than one may think. You should also take note, he was sitting on the script and storyboards for this movie for 15 years before he started filming it. You would think that after all that time he would have a better idea about what he wanted to shoot, especially considering he has been quoted as saying the film is almost identical to his storyboards, which makes the excessive shooting ratio very confusing. Also, from a general perspective when looking at his previous experience, Mad Max 1, not great. Mad Max 2, pretty darn great. Mad Max 3, kinda crappy. Fury Road, amazing. When half the films in a franchise being directed by the same guy aren't generally considered to be good, we shouldn't have full confidence in the guy making them. Above all, I believe Miller's biggest weakness seems to be his general direction of actors. According to an interview with Gizmodo, Tom Hardy expressed that both he and Charlie Theron had a lot of frustration with George on the set of Fury Road. From his comments, one can infer that Miller isn't great at expressing his vision to others, which is a director's most important job. Tom would often start the day having no idea what he was supposed to be doing and had to rely on minute-to-minute -minute instructions. Now if we look at everything together, he appears to be a poor planner and not a strong writer. He has been proven to dramatically overshoot and goes over budget. He also isn't great at expressing his vision and actors have trouble getting clear direction from him. I don't know about you, but with that description, I don't necessarily want to trust him with other properties, especially ones I love. Yes, Fury Road was incredible, but due to the nature of the film's story and the fact that it was his own characters, there was a lot of room for him to make mistakes without people noticing. Look, I'm not saying George is a bad director, I'm just presenting the idea that he might not be an efficient one. After all, Fury Road was profitable and well loved, and George wants to make more, but we still haven't heard anything official about a sequel. My guess is that Warner Brothers want him to produce it and not direct or write it, so it can be made responsibly, which has caused a stalemate. What do you guys and gals think? Should we trust George Miller with other properties outside of Mad Max? Let me know down below and let's have a conversation. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and alert button. If you want to support the channel, then check out our Patreon page or the t-shirt store. And you can follow The Film Guy on Twitter and Instagram at The Real Film Guy. Or if you like my voice, you can follow me at T-E-S Drew. Otherwise, I'll see you later.